I may have gone a step too far with this one, but I'm hoping these dice will be my claim to flame. If not, that's okay, I'm not too burnt up about it. It's just to chip off the old smolder, you know? And you gotta admit, I got a sorcery point there. So just call me the Wizard of Whiskey, cause I'm flinging fireballs. To make any great dice set, you need a good base. Now you can either 3D print and design your own, or you can use one that somebody else has made that looks awesome, as long as you're not, you know, reselling it. I'm using these Poly Hero dice that I found at my local game store, and they have a bunch of different colors and designs, but the one I got is in parchment and black ink, which looks awesome. The D20 is in this awesome orb, the D12 has this kind of double-sided scepter, the D10s are two potions, which I want a whole potion set for sure. The D8 is a scroll, the D6 is a fireball, and the D4 is this nice little poison looking decanter. The whole set is awesome, and it comes in a dragon fire with brimstone color scheme, but it doesn't come with eight fireballs, which 8d6 is what you need for the fireball spell, so that's a crime. We're going to make our own using their fireball, a tiny red solo cup, a little d6 die, and a toothpick. Now I'm going to show you how to make your own dice in this video, but if you want to know in a little bit more detail than what I'm going to do, check out my how to make your own sharp edge dice video. It, it goes over things in a little bit greater of a step. But let's get started. So I'm going to take a end of this toothpick and just kind of elongate the fireball by putting the end of the toothpick on there so that we have an extra area for the resin to go into. I'm going to do that with super glue and this instant super glue set. You absolutely don't need this stuff. You could either just use super glue or you could use hot glue. That's normally what I do, but I wanted to reuse this to make multiple molds. So I thought using super glue would be just fine and it works out for me. But again, you do whatever you're comfortable with here. You can see after I put that accelerator on the super glue, it starts hardening in seconds. In about eight seconds, that thing is hard and it's not going anywhere, which is great. Again, I want to be able to reuse this. So I actually put some extra super glue on there, which I don't recommend. You can kind of see that in the final product. So don't go with that. Just uh, enough to keep it held on is all we need. So I'm going to take the other end of the toothpick and stick it down on the dice here. Spray it with some accelerator. And in about eight seconds, that thing is rock solid. That ain't going nowhere. You can see I originally was going to use a Dixie cup because it was a little bit taller, but even then it wasn't tall enough for the mold that I needed to make. So I'm going to use this hack that I've seen a lot of people do and take packing tape and run it around the edge of my little red solo cup. This creates a seal that will give us a nice tall extra bit for the mold and you don't have to worry that silicone is not going to stick to the sticky part of the tape. It will still come off just fine. Silicone doesn't want to stick to anything. But if you're worried about it still leaking, which I was, you can take a little bit of hot glue and use it on a low temp hot glue setting or else it may melt your little cup. And you've got yourself a nice little seal to make sure that your silicone is not going to run out the bottom. This didn't really even need to be there for me. It was just a nice little safety precaution in case the silicone did leak. But, you know, it, it's always better to be safe than sorry. So it's, it's good to have that because if you do have a failure, your whole thing's ruined. So we're going to take this whole thing, which is going to be replicated in resin, and we'll just cut off the extra bit where the dice is and put some hot glue on the other end of the dice and put it down into our mold. After a few seconds, this is strong enough for us to be able to turn it on the side and be able to see what we're going to pour silicone around. We've got our full mold and there's plenty of space to pour that silicone in there. I think we're good to go. We're going to use Sorta Clear 12 for this. You don't have to use Sorta Clear 12. It's just become my new favorite because you can see inside the mold when you're doing things and make sure that all your stuff is set and good to go. So if you have other silicone that you like to Use that is mold making that will totally work fine here. I just like using sort of clear 12. I always wear gloves when I work with anything, one for easy cleanup because I don't really think it's a safety issue when it comes to silicone, but I've already got it on that way I can work with the resin immediately after. Mix it up for about five minutes and you can see there's tons of air bubbles in there, which is fine. If you're not going to pressure cast, you probably will never notice it. But I'm going to pressure cast because I want my dice to be transparent, and to do that we want to make sure that our silicone has no bubbles in it. So I pour the silicone all around the dice, making sure to pour high and slow when it comes to being around the numbers. That way all of the numbers get filled up and there's not any huge nasty bubbles that pressure casting would not fix on its own. So 
this is working great. You can see we're not really having any leaks with the silicone here. Doesn't mean we wouldn't have some with time, so it, it's still good to have that hot glue in there. And I put it in a pressure pot and pump it up to about 40 PSI. I leave it in there for eight hours, the full cure time of the silicone, and we will have ourselves a very nice looking mold that we can start working with. Now, this is great. The mold looks fantastic, and I'm ready to take it out of here. The hot glue in itself was a little bit more trouble than I anticipated, so it took me a while to get that off. I eventually resorted to shears, but I have one fireball mold, and to cast fireball means I either roll this eight time, or if I want eight dice, I need to make eight dice out of this mold, and I use 24 hour resin, so uh, that would take me eight days to do, and I'm not about that life. So we're gonna make one more mold out of this so that we can do it all in four days if I ever wanna make a fireball set. I take my X-Acto knife and run it along the edge of the dice on the inside. This is another benefit to using the clear silicone because I can use the knife and go right along where either the seam lines are or the corners of the dice are. That way I'm not messing up any of the numbers on the face. It becomes really easy to cut out of there and you pretty much don't have to sand these, which I don't think I would be able to sand these fireball dice to make them look clean and pretty, so this is really important in this step. Again, make sure you've got your gloves on. You can see my dice actually came off of the other fireball dice, which was weird because it was super glued. So I had to re-glue that back on. And again, we're doing the same step, except this time I learned to hot glue the dice down in there first because it's hard to get your fingers down in between the sticky tape without messing something up. We're going to go ahead and mix up another batch of silicone. This is the exact same steps that we just went through. I'm just making a second mold because I want life to be easier and I don't wanna to have to wait eight days for a fireball set. Four days is already waiting enough. Maybe eventually I will make eight separate molds so I can do it all in one go. But exact same process until boom, we've got ourselves a second mold. And this time I was lucky because after peeling the tape off, the mold actually came right out of the red solo cup just by twisting it. From there, again, take your X-Acto knife, run it along the fireball dice and you've got yourself two working molds and a dice that's still pretty much intact. I can use this just with the normal parchment and ink set and keep that. So that's great. I was happy with that and that was kind of a happy little accident. Now we're going to close these molds up. I'm using my patent pending. Tape it around and pinch the tape off so you can get a nice tight seal on your molds. And we're going to use Art and Glow resin. It's kind of my favorite to use. Again, make sure you are covered in your safety equipment and wear your respirator as well. Now for Art and Glow, it has no VOCs, so I don't think you need your respirator, but it's always better to be safe. And it's not like you can really go to the hospital right now. They're kind of awful. So it's just better to be safe than sorry, right? So I mix up about 40 milliliters of this resin, which is double the amount needed. You need 20 milliliters for two of these dice. I've learned that throughout doing this process, but I didn't know that in the beginning. We're going to dye it with some cadmium red alcohol ink and add some silver additive liquid glitter. That will give us a nice little color sheen combo. I do one drop of the red at first to see what color I get and two drops of the silver additive. And that gives me a kind of pinkish orange, which isn't what I was going for. So I do one more drop to give me a nice fireball red. And then I was happy with that color. Alcohol ink you can add a lot more of than the liquid glitter, so go crazy with that. But I wanted to add something a little special in these dice by adding some imitation gold foil. I thought the yellow of the gold inside would both look cool, because I like gold, and two, the yellow and the red would make it look more like a fireball than just one transparent red color. So I thought it was a nice combo. You can use pipettes to get the resin into your dice a little bit more easily, and the gold flows up into the pipette just like a normal bit of resin would. So it's really easy to suck it up in there and then push it down into the mold. Now, go slowly. With this resin, we've got a 40 minute working time, so it's better to take your time and make sure that the resin fills up slowly into all of the number holes. That way you've got a nice set of dice. I have a little extra secret project here, which I'll show you at the end of the video, because I had extra silicone and extra resin, and so I thought I'd use it. After 24 hours in a 40 PSI pressure pot, we have two completed fireball dice. Well, semi-completed. We still need to cut the sprues off and paint them. And if you just wanted to add one fireball to your wizard set, then you're totally done, honestly. This is a perfectly working D6 right here. Now, it's easiest to cut the sprues off, which I don't show here because you can really just cut them off with any shears at whatever length you want. But gosh dang, do those look real good. I was so happy with these. There's basically no mold lines other than the ones that came with the actual dice. So I was ready to move on and make another couple sets of these. I do the exact same process as before, mix up resin, throw some extra alcohol ink in there, throw some glitter, throw some gold foil, and I started learning as I was doing this, because I was using less and less resin, what the proper ratio was, which is where I eventually came up with only needing 20 milliliters. Experimentation will lead you to a lot of results, and I wasted a lot of resin, but I wasted it so you don't have to. If you're recreating this, it's about 10 milliliters per fireball dice that you're doing. I go ahead and make up two more sets of these, which equates to my eight dice total 
total, again, 24 hours in the pressure pot, take them out, pour the next set of resin, put them in. Another benefit of the clear silicone is if you have a YouTube channel, you get some cool shots like this where you pour the resin down in the bottom and you can see it filling up from the bottom up, which is kind of cool. And I ain't no cinematographer or nothing, but that's a darn good shot right there, pulling the pipette out and pushing the resin in. Also, don't at me. In the South, we totally call them pipette, not pipette. Let's just enjoy some fiery click clack sounds. Dang, those are some spicy hot click clack sounds, which is really good. I, I it, Both for sound and for visuals, these look really awesome. The gold makes it look like a nice sparkling fire and the red is just phenomenal on the inside. Now, we're not quite done. We still need to paint these things. And one thing I was worried about with my painting style of just throwing paint on there and wiping it off is trying to wipe it off on these you can see there's lots of little ridges in this fireball the way it's made it makes it have a nice texture which is great but it makes it hard to paint but we're gonna go ahead and try painting it with some auric armor gold now not just my love of gold makes me want to paint these things gold i think gold makes it look like more fire so that's why we went with gold this time also my love of gold but it ended up working out great these wiped off better than most of the dice that i make for my paint some paint on there and then wipe it off with your finger technique it totally works if you don't drop it. It totally works to just take the paint right off of the numbers and you've got yourself a completed dice here. I think using a nice bright gold really makes a difference on being able to actually see the numbers. I think anything dark would have been really difficult to have the numbers pop on the table. I think the camera actually doesn't do it justice. It's really kind of hard to see the numbers on camera. They look like they pop, but it's very difficult compared to using your normal eyes. You can see them just fine on the table. And that secret project that I had was just I made a replica of my wedding ring, which is gold and silver. So now I have a red and silver fireball wedding ring. It gives me a plus one to spell casting. D don't doubt it, it really does. Now with the rest of the dice inked up, we have our full fireball set of fireball dice, which is just awesome. And it, it, conceptually, it's so fun to think that like, yeah, I've got this set that is exclusively used for the fireball spell. I, if it weren't a spell that was used so gosh dang often, I wouldn't do it. But for fireball, I mean, so many classes use it and it's such a iconic spell for both D&D &D and pretty much any video game, so to have a set that I can just pop out for my wizard or my sorcerer or cleric even. I like playing light clerics and they cast fireball, so it works phenomenally. They roll really, really well, and it's just so cool to see them on the table. The one thing I might change is if you want to sand the edges down so that you have a nice point on your fireball, go for it. I didn't bother because it doesn't bother me, but if you want to have a nice little tip, go ahead and sand them down and if you got yourself a nice dice. I didn't have to do any cleanup on these, and I think they look absolutely Absolutely phenomenal. Couldn't be more happy with them. Huge thank you to all my patrons over on Patreon for helping support the channel. We actually recently had a vote and we finally have a name for the Dice Goblin mascot and his name is Twintig, which is Dutch for 20. I think it's a great name, so meet Twintig the Dice Goblin. I don't speak Dutch or anything, but they voted for it, and I think it's a super cute name for a super cute mascot. So thank you for patrons for voting on that. If you want to be a patron, it's a good time to do so, because we're about to start voting for one video that I'm going to do in April, because patrons get a choice in one video that we're going to do. So make sure that if you want to be a part of that, go for it. It's a good time to get on. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you might want to see how to make some more dice like this in the future, or any other sort of D&D &D or tabletop related content that I do because I kind of do a lot of that. It's my thing, you know? I'm sorry I haven't been as active in the comments or Twitter or Instagram lately. I've, I work in healthcare and because of the coronavirus we've been crazy busy. I'm not like a doctor or a nurse or anything like the heroes so no, no praise. It's just been busy so I hope you understand. With that also our 100,000 subscriber mark. We are 200 subscribers away from that but that means we are probably going to have to delay the celebration because a few things have been put on hold. So very excited to hit it as long as everybody doesn't just unsubscribe, which I mean, I get it if you want to, but I'm very excited for that and I can't wait to celebrate with all of you. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have a fantastic day.